Well, this is a valid point. Not exactly. I do change or revert or some of these. Uh... Hey, so today we are going to discuss uh, one of my favorite interview questions that I generally ask the candidates. In last uh, two and a half years, I have taken around 400 plus interviews with candidates for different level from senior developers to architects. And uh, this one is one of my really close to heart question uh, because this uh, involves uh, some of the basic concepts uh, around object oriented programming. Uh, and uh, this tells like how much you are uh, touched uh, with the actual coding and the concepts around that. And the interesting point uh, around this concept is like 95% of people do fail to answer uh, this question or uh, they, uh, they doesn't uh, understand the concepts actually, uh, how things work out. So the way uh, I generally ask this question, uh, I generally tend to uh, give hypothesis and uh, of course uh, that is a wrong hypothesis. And the person I am discussing this question or this concept, they need to provide proofs or pointers against the hypothesis and prove it wrong. So let's cut the long story short and uh, come straight to the point. So I put my hypothesis something like an abstract class can do whatever an interface can do and I don't need the interfaces at all. So this is the base hypothesis and I do change or revert or some of these uh, uh, wording around that change some language uh, based on the interaction and <laughs> runtime uh, discussion. Alright, the question is actually very simple. What is the difference between an abstract class and an interface? Now, you might think this as very simple question, uh, but the expectation is not the theoretical responses that you receive or find when you google this question. There are a whole lot of things, whole lot of uh, sites that would come up. They tend to provide more or less uh, similar responses. Uh, but the idea is like the person uh, who is explaining these points, they should try to uh, give that from their practical experience. How they would actually apply these concepts uh, when they do code uh, on a day to day basis. Well, the first response that uh, the person gives uh, in most cases is like uh, if I need to have some sort of a base functionality uh, that needs to be derived within the classes, uh, uh, I, I would uh, go for your abstract class and in the case otherwise, I will go for an interface. Well, this is a valid point. Not exactly. And why it's not valid? Because if you if you know C sharp 8.0 onwards, you have a support uh, where you can have some sort of a default implementation within your interfaces. Well, this changed the dynamics uh, that we have been learning and preparing of the object oriented programming since the stone age, uh, the very early times <laughs> we started uh, studying the uh, textbooks around that. So when we have a default implementation in an interface, uh, more or less it works uh, just like your abstract class when you define the base implementation. Wherever required in your concrete class that implements the interface, you can have uh, or uh, override the default implementation and it works flawless. So again, this is my counterpoint that I put forward when the candidate says like they can have some sort of a default implementation they can go for your abstract class, otherwise interface. And this actually breaks the complete defense and the story uh, that the uh, person uh, builds to uh, prove wrong by a hypothesis. Well, in that case, okay, uh, point taken. Uh, but why did Microsoft actually added this uh, support altogether? Well, to answer this question, most people do capture the point uh, that the interfaces can have default implementation uh, but they fail to understand why Microsoft added this support. Well, there is one hidden uh, constraint uh, if we go with the default implementations within the interface and that constraint is like you cannot have constructors or similar initialization within the uh, interface and if you don't have your constructors well, you can't have the DI, you can't have injection and most of the modern code is based on or built on the dependency injection and that is something that you can't have. 
Well, although you can't have your uh, transactors and dependency injection, there are work around uh, around that. Uh, we will come to that at a later point. But the idea being the Microsoft added this support uh, so that people can have uh, or extend their interfaces uh, without actually breaking or implementing each and every part of the implementing code. Uh, there are, let's say, n number of implementations for your interface and you have to add a new member in your interface so what will happen uh, the, in, in going by the ideal way you have to let's say uh, update all these classes all these libraries uh, uh, where this interface have the implementation and that would be a very uh, tedious task and in most cases it will be like uh, not uh, implemented exception or something like that because you actually don't need that so uh, the Microsoft uh, provided a way a workaround uh, with that and you just add a method in your interface, provide some default implementation and uh, let your class decide who is implementing this. Uh, do they want to extend or override this method or not and it will work flawless without actually uh, breaking any of the other implementations. So this was the point. Now let's move back to our original question. So this is the crux like why it is done but uh, our problem statement was a bit different. We were trying to understand like what, what is the difference between an abstract class and an interface and where should we use one. So let's move back to our original hypothesis. Why an interface? I can do everything with my abstract class. Now the second most response uh, that I do tend to receive uh, from uh, different people is like uh, uh, C-sharp doesn't support multiple inheritance and in case I need to have uh, let's say multiple inheritance in my class uh, that can be done with an interface uh, but I can only drive from only one uh, class. Well that's actually a valid point uh, but there is a workaround for that as well. Uh, it might not be a right or an optimized way but uh, to counter that what I can do is I can do a sort of a class chaining. Uh, let's say there are interfaces interface A, B and C uh, and I need to implement all these interfaces in my concrete class. So what I can do is like I can uh, uh, so if I need to implement those and have abstract classes for that what I can do is uh, I can do a class chaining. I can have an abstract class A, abstract class B and abstract class C each driving from each other and again uh, just like uh, my final concrete class I can have my concrete class driving from the abstract class C. Now when I do that it will have all the functionality of my abstract classes A, B and C that I need to mandatorily implement uh, in my concrete class. At this point, most people uh, do tend to uh, lower all their shields and tend up agreeing upon my hypothesis. But what people fail to understand is like when we are using uh, abstract classes uh, versus interface, uh, in interface we are just having the implementation, we are implementing the methods and uh, when we have abstract class and we override those methods uh, basically what we are doing is we are overriding uh, some other implementation uh, it may be an abstract but uh, we are overriding that implementation so that's a bit change in a behavior i would say not exactly from a final result uh, but from a functionality perspective there are a few other responses that people do. So again, I'm not moving into the general responses that comes up uh, in the top five Google results, uh, difference between abstract class and an interface. Uh, but again, from a project exposure, what people uh, respond. So these are the two common responses. So long story short, let's come to the exact answer. And the way to answer this question correctly and in a very few words uh, in a concise manner is that interfaces are basically uh, used to present contracts. So that is a discussion line. If I need to have some sort of functionality where I need to define some contracts, I'll go with interfaces. And if I need to have some sort of an implementation that I need to override or drive, uh, then I'll go with my abstract classes as simple as that. 
So a lot of people who actually work on the low level spets uh, and they do tend to know uh, the advantages and benefits like how do we apply the interfaces, we define the contracts and then we implement them. Nowadays a lot of people that I interact with, they basically tend to do CRUD based uh, programming. So when I say CRUD based, is it's very simple, they just define, uh, so if I say in terms of a uh, web uh, API MVC uh, ASP.NET Core project, they will just define a controller, then some sort of business layer maybe may not be and directly communicate with the DAL layer maybe may not be without actually understanding how the things work out. So guys, uh, I apologize if I fail your <laughs> expectation, but yes, the answer is very simple. Uh, it's just the contracts. So do let us know via comment section if you want to see more of such videos and we will focus on that as well. If you do like the video, press the thumbs up button. It helps us uh, remain motivated and uh, understand better. Uh, we would be doing this series more often uh, for interview based uh, questions and scenarios. So uh, subscribe to our channel to get uh, the latest notifications as the video comes in. You may also press the bell icon to get the instant notification and uh, not being missed out whenever a new video comes in. So do let us know uh, if you have also faced uh, this question, uh, abstract classes was an interface and any of the variations around that uh, within your uh, interview discussions or panel discussions. Do let us know what question did you face and uh, like what response did you provide it. Do let us know in the comment section and it can help us a lot of uh, other people as well. If you have any queries, questions, any feedback, uh, just do let us know within the comment section. I'll try to answer each of that, uh, uh, but do let us know whatever you feel. Thanks for watching this guys. Hope this helps you out. Have a great day or great night, whatever.